Hi everybody, this is Super Testnet, and today I wanted to show off my latest invention, which is uh, Loan Shark. It is a non-custodial borrowing and lending software for Bitcoin uh, that's Bitcoin only. And it's got a bunch of cool properties and some really weird ones by being Bitcoin only, and I just wanted to show you off how it works and show you what it does. So uh, before I describe how it works, I'm going to show you how it works. Uh, but before I do that, I'm also going to open up uh, these two pages right here where I have an ongoing contract, and I'm going to take a screenshot of it because I will be referring to this uh, later. So let me just do that, and I will say screenshot for demo. Okay, so we'll be referring back to this in a few minutes. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to pull up this guy and this guy and uh, show you how it works from scratch. Okay, so Bitcoin only lending software. Let's let's uh, make a loan uh, offer and then we will take a look at how this thing works. So you pick an amount that you want to loan. Uh, I can. This one's going to be a minimum of 546 sats and a maximum of however much I have in this web wallet. Uh, the wallet currently has 30,000 sats in it, so that'll be the maximum. Uh, and then we have to name a percentage, like maybe how much how much money do I want to get as an interest rate for making this loan? I will take and uh, I, will, I will do a 10% for this. And how much ca collateral must the borrower post? Um, this is a fully collateralized software, and you get their money if they don't, you know, pay up. So I'm going to make it 200%. They have to post, uh, you know, if, if they're borrowing 10,000 cents, they have to post 20,000 collateral. Uh, and then how long should it last? You can pick three months, six months, or 12 months, and I will go with three months in this case. Uh, so I'm going to make an offer right here, and I'm using Noster to broadcast these things. So that just showed up on both the lender screen, where I have the option to cancel it, as well as the borrower screen. So I'm going to accept this offer right here, and I'm going to say I want to borrow 1,000 cents, because that's between, that is within the range uh, between 546 and 30,000. So let's just do that, and when I do that, it uh, does a little progress bar here and creates the loan. And here we go. I have I have a little contract created. Um, so what happened here? And this guy is still loading it. Here we go. Uh, what happened here is uh, pretty cool. Uh, we agreed on a Bitcoin address that encodes our contract. If we go look at this Bitcoin address, we can actually see it. I'm using MutinyNet.com um, for for demo purposes here, and I'll be moving it over to MainNet right after I make this video. Uh, but we can see there's 2,000 sats in this Bitcoin address. There's one transaction, it moved 2,000 sats into it, and um, that's, that's the, that is the collateral for this loan, because uh, the principal was 1,000 sats, and then 2,000 sats is being um, posted as collateral. And then 1,000 sats went from, uh, in an atomic swap, went from the lender to the borrower. So uh, you, you didn't see that happen, but if you check your manage wallet, uh, his balance is different now. It was 30,000. He put 2,000 sats in, so you would expect him to have 28,000 sats, but he got 1,000 sats um, as principal minus some transaction fees. So that's why you know he's closer to 29,000 sats in here. Uh, so cool, we have, we've, made an, we've made a loan, uh, and it is ongoing. Um, so this is where the interesting comes in and, and where this Bitcoin address is special. This Bitcoin address that holds the money is a smart contract. And uh, basically it has two spending paths, which I can show right here. This is how the two spending paths work. Uh, Tapleaf1, I'm using you know Taproot, which allows us to have multiple scripts in the same Bitcoin address. Tapleaf1 allows the lender to spend the money after three months goes by. So when this, you know, when, when we reach block, you know, this one, which is d due in three months, because that's what we agreed to for the term of our loan, when that block arrives, he'll be able to just take the money. And I have a little button right here where he can try to do it in advance. Uh, and he just specifies, you know, I'm going to take the collateral. He makes this transaction. And if he tries to broadcast this transaction, taking the money, it doesn't work because right there you can see non-final. Uh, we haven't reached the the time lock period uh, hasn't expired yet so he has to wait until this before he can take the collateral um, and that's what he does if the lo uh, borrower doesn't pay off his loan the lender gets to just take the 2,000 sats that are at stake here and that's good for him because you know he only he only gave 1,000 sats away as principal but he can get up to 2,000 sats by um, you know if the if the other guy doesn't pay off his loan if the borrower does pay off the loan the lender still is making out he's going to get 100 sats and that's where this other um, tap leaf comes in so this other tap leaf says the lender and the borrower can spend together 
And so before any money went into uh, this Bitcoin address, uh, the borrower and the lender both co-signed, um, well, the, the, the lender actually just co uh, he created a transaction that gives the money, um, gives the collateral to this guy as long as the principal gets paid to him. And this transaction, because it uses the second spend path here, there is no time lock on it. So at any time, the borrower can use the signature from the lender, which he already gave to him before any money was put into this address. Um, he can use that signature, the borrower can use that signature plus his own to uh, pay off the loan, pay you know 1,100 sets to this guy that's paying off the principal plus interest. And then he can do whatever he wants with the collateral. You know, it's his. He can he can just deposit it back into his wallet or whatever. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show him paying off a loan. So I click this button, pay it off, and it asks me what fee rate I want to use. I will use a fee rate of one sat per byte, and there it is. Success. Here's your transaction ID, and you can see. You know, I just took all the all the collateral, all 2,000 sats, and gave it to my, gave 1,100 sets, that's the principal plus interest to the lender, uh, and then the rest I got back to myself. And, um, and so that's what the borrower just did. So great, there we go. And then also over here you can see we now have a history tab, and you can see a little profit and loss thing. He made 100 sats on this, on this loan, and this guy, you know, he made 100 sats on, or he lost 100 sats in this loan, and that is that. Uh, okay, so that's how that works. The reason now, oh, now, uh, oh yeah, manage wallet. You can see he has an extra, some extra money in there, which is nice. The other thing I wanted to show you was um, this guy. So previously, I showed you this, um, this thing, this contract, and uh, it, at the time there were ten, there were like ten blocks left. Uh, so if I pull up that screenshot I took earlier, uh, you can see screenshot for demo. Uh, there were like eight blocks left on this contract when this happened, but now those blocks have gone by and so this guy is actually in this case um, He is not paid like the, the, the time has expired and he didn't pay off his loan So this guy can actually take the collateral. So he's going to do that. He's going to set a one sat per byte thing and Bam, he just took the collateral. He swept it uh, there, it, it already just confirmed because mutiny net is awesome uh, he took all 2,000 sats that were at stake and gave, uh, you know, most of it to himself minus a small mining fee. And if you look at history here, for him, he got a bigger profit. Instead of just getting 100 sats out of this loan, he got 1,000 because he gave 1,000 sats as principal. But then, as it says here, the borrower did not repay, so he took his collateral, which was 2,000 sats. So he gets, you know, a nice big profit from there. And this guy, sadly, he has 1,000 sats and losses. Okay, so that is the way the loan works and uh, then the last thing I wanted to show is why you might use this okay so my computer crashed there uh, well it didn't crash but it ran out of battery so now I'm plugged in again and can continue so the last thing I wanted to show was why you might want to use this because this has some you know strange properties this sort of lending system uh, and one of the strange properties is that uh, the, the, the lender in this scenario always does well like no matter what happens he always makes a profit um, which is not always the case in um, traditional uh, loan software. Normally, if the lender lends out, you know, usually they're lending out dollars. So it's like, I'm going to give you a uh, hundred dollars, and um, you need to put up two hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin as collateral. The lender can actually lose money if the uh, price of Bitcoin drops out, um, and and the the money he gets back when the guy pays off his loan is worth less than um, he would have had if he had just stayed the same. And similarly, the same thing can happen with, uh, with the borrower. The, in my case, the borrower always loses money. Uh, you know, whether he forfeits his collateral and loses a thousand sats in this case, or the previous, in the one I showed you before, or pays it off and loses only 100 sats, or you know, whatever the uh, interest rate is, he's still always losing money. And that's not always the case in traditional lending things, because if he borrows $100, and then when he pays off that $100, uh, the pr he like went long on Bitcoin with it and then the price of Bitcoin shot up He can make out better than he would have otherwise So this is a bit of a strange situation where uh, instead of a normal lending software where there's two assets Bitcoin and dollars There's only Bitcoin in this one So the borrower always loses money and the lender always makes money So why might you want to do this if you're you know You can see why you might want to do it as a lender because you, you always make money on this You've got a Bitcoin transaction 
that you just have to wait to broadcast and you'll definitely get some money or you can wait for this guy to broadcast it and then you'll get you know um, a smaller amount of money um, but you'll always make money as a lender so you can see why you might want to do that but why might you want to borrow and so I made a little comic to show you why you might want to borrow and so let me maximize this so you can see it um, here's why you might want to borrow let's say that back in 2010 you're a little you're a guy named Bob and you bought a bunch of bitcoins so here Bob has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten bitcoins that he bought back in 2010 when they were like five bucks a piece and Bob lives in the United States um, so he's happy you know he's got a bunch of Bitcoin that he got early on um, next tab next slide of the comic book let's suppose that Bob wants to use some of his bitcoins to buy this fridge and this fridge costs, uh, you know, it's a really good fridge. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's probably got a smart something or other. It costs 1,500 bucks. Well, if he does that, he's gonna be sad because now he has, a, he has a sad face now because the fact that his Bitcoin's appreciated so much in value since 2010 means that at least in the United States, he's gonna have a really big tax on any money that he spends using his Bitcoin. He's gonna have, you know, almost the same amount as the good is worth is gonna be, uh, he's gonna have to pay in capital gains taxes for the appreciation of his money from basically nothing to, you know, whatever it is today. Um, so that's gonna make him sad. He can't really use his Bitcoins to um, purchase this fridge without incurring a hefty tax penalty. However, he could come over to Loan Shark and deposit his 10 Bitcoins in Loan Shark uh, as um, a borrower. He could deposit it as collateral and borrow f these five Bitcoins that he gets out over here. So he's posting 200% collateral. He wants to borrow five Bitcoins and he withdraws those from Loan Shark. There is no tax penalty for using your Bitcoins as collateral, at least not in the United States. Um, so if he if, as long as he pays off that loan, he doesn't incur a tax penalty for having deposited these Bitcoins as collateral for a loan. Um, but what he can do then, last uh, slide on here, uh, is he can go back to that fridge that he wanted, the $1,500 fridge, and he can use these five Bitcoins that he got from Loan Shark uh, as the, what he's going to buy that fridge with. And now there's still going to be a capital gains tax probably because you know from the time he purchased this to the time he buys the fridge, Bitcoin probably appreciated a little bit. So he's going to have to pay something. But, you know, he bought these things at whatever the current price of Bitcoin is. They probably didn't appreciate that much by the time he went to buy this fridge. So his capital gains tax is going to be much smaller. And so Bob here, he might want um, to do this. He might want to actually use Loan Shark um, and deposit his Bitcoins into it. And then, you know, he, he'll be happy after that. He'll be, he'll have this money. Uh, in fact, the only difference between this situation where he has the $5 tax and this situation where he has the $1,300 tax uh, is that instead of using his old Bitcoins that have appreciated so much in value, he's using these fresh Bitcoins he got from Loan Shark that have not uh, appreciated so much in value uh, for him from the time he obtained them. Uh, however, you can see his, his stack is smaller here. Like, why would you ever want to put, you know, 10 Bitcoins into Loan Shark and get out five yeah, you might be able to save th thousands of dollars in taxes, but you're losing hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars in Bitcoin. Uh, well, the answer is that in order to repay his loan, all he has to do is, you know, this is the principle of the loan. So all he has to do is, uh, where's the loan? He has to take this amount, uh, put it back into Loan Shark as, uh, to pay off his loan, plus a little extra sliver for um, the interest rate. And then he gets, you know, his deposit back. He gets, he gets his money. I showed you that in a transaction earlier. You get your collateral back if you pay off your loan. So as long as, you know, this, the little sliver he has to pay as an interest rate is smaller than, you know, this big tax penalty he would have incurred from using his regular Bitcoins, Bob does well. So this kind of allows you to arbitrage um, uh, Bitcoin, ta Bitcoin tax laws. Maybe if you're a lender and you're in somewhere like Germany that has much more favorable, um, much more friendly uh, capital gains tax laws, then you could lend out Bitcoins, get an interest rate on them, and people in the United States, like me, who are trying to spend their Bitcoins on daily items, can use those Bitcoins and not incur massive tax penalties. So Loan Shark allows you to do this. So that's one way that I think this might be useful, even though it's Bitcoin only. I also made a version of this that worked with Tether. Uh, USDT was the was the collateral, and then Bitcoin was the uh, currency that, that was the principal. And that also works, but um, I don't like working with altcoins. And uh, 
a guy on Stacker News sort of yelled at me for <laughs> making something that used altcoins, which I've never done before. I've always made Bitcoin only stuff. So I retooled Loan Shark so that it's Bitcoin only and doesn't use altcoins anymore. And it's still useful, I think. I think it's a useful tool. So let me know what you think. I hope you guys like it. And uh, this has been Loan Shark. Of course, you can find it on my GitHub. I'll put the link under this video. Um, but uh, yeah, let's, let's see if, if Bitcoiners use this um, as a way to borrow and lend money. Also, uh, if this is going to get used, it, it'll have to make it so that you're not storing your money in the browser. This is just like storing everything in local storage in your browser and like browser extensions and stuff can just take your money. So don't use this until, you know, on, on mainnet until that's done. But, uh, but I am going to be, you know, you can, you can play around with it on testnet and maybe help me improve it so that, you know, it doesn't store all your bitcoins in, in your browser. Cool. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys like it. See you soon.